I had a whole other video planned out. I was in the middle of editing it. Then I got notified that the demo for this came out. And I dropped everything. I've seen so much art of these characters already, and uh, I guess I'm interested. <laughs> well, you know me. <laughs> I can't. I can't let a good thing go unplayed. So I can always use more Dino Girls in my life, anyway. The floor felt cold. A warm, tingling sensation smothered my face as my body began registering the pain. The aching in my knuckles came next, then my chest. The snide remarks and mocking comments didn't help the beating headache. This was the end of my normal human high school life. I'm sitting in my dad's truck on my way to my new school. The old man was insistent that he drop me off on my first day, probably to make sure I wasn't skipping. It's my first time having to live in dino territory. It's already bad enough having to drive past Dodger neighborhoods. Now I gotta coexist with them too. Porn. Porn. Leaked cartel video. Car wreck video. Porn. And there I see it. The school fight that's still circulating. It's been six months since that incident. It should all be old news by now. But then again, of course some clout chasing fuck is going to dig up drama and post it to pretend it's a recent thing. I step out of the car, slinging my backpack over my shoulder. See you at dinner. Jesus Christ. Alright, Ironstone High. Let's get this over with. Walking down the sidewalk towards the building, my eyes are immediately assaulted by the crowd of saturated hues, colorful enough to restore vision to a blind child. The intrusive thought of walking the other way back to my apartment grew like an ever-present tumor. My thoughts halt as one of the meteor dodgers runs right into me like a freight train, nearly knocking me off balance, and completely knocking my phone out of my hand and into the pavement. Yo, what, what the, the fuck, fuck dude? The red dish orange dino, a raptor I think, sporting a wool jacket twists his head over to my fallen relic of a phone. He, in what felt like a nanosecond, picks up the phone and hands it back to me, all without batting an eye. My immediate reaction is to look at my phone. Sure as shit, it's been shattered. <laughs> it's it's the simple things, dude. One more year of school, and it's on dino territory. I really screwed things up for myself. I might not ever see a human again. I come to right as my chosen soda makes its way down the tube. Only for it to get stuck. Whatever. I pick up a light scent of lavender. Why is it always lavender? Oh my god, I want to protect her. That's a record. That's a fucking record. Uh, can I help you? As the flamboyant Spaniard gives his greeting, Tiffany hands me a pamphlet titled, Your New Beginning at Ironstone High. Gotta let them down easy. Don't need to cause a scene like a few minutes ago. Look, I'm not really interested. I'd rather just get to class. Of <laughs> all the things I was expecting to hear, it was absolutely not postal, dude. I right, cool. Oh, my God. Anything but that. Seeing my obviously freaked out response, Diego lets out a hearty laugh before offering me a fist bump. That sounds oddly cryptic, but whatever. I accept the fist bump and try my best to force the corners of my mouth upwards. The result is a horrible mix of a serial killer's smirk and someone who tried to bite into a lemon. 
<laughs> Please just make this end already. Halfway down the hall, I hear some sort of pitter-patter approach. No! Fuck no! This is the second time this happened! This little- I turned to point my finger at the source of my agony, but alas, I was pointing to a large crowd. I stopped abruptly after spotting a brown, leathery patch on the ground. I opened up the wallet to find the student ID. Hey, this dude right here, you know him? A sweet guy, huh? Uh, all right. What the fuck kind of interior is this? He hands me another similar looking pamphlet that Tiffany handed me, this time about Estra's season safety. Right. What exactly is Estra- Oh. My fucking god. I get the feeling I'm gonna want to keep this in mind. People like me? The fuck is that supposed to mean, huh? You think I'm just some waste of skin? Some sort of reject? Well, fuck you! I don't need to prove anything to a shit-eating inferior meteor du- Mr. Lance shoots me a soul-piercing glare. I barely manage to nod. God, this guy's got such a different vibe. From Inko and Anon, it's great. I'm gonna have to start practicing sounding like a hot-tempered dickhead, aren't I? And not again. I rise from my seat, staring at my shoes as I walk back to the door. I've got a feeling in my gut. I'm not sure if it's gonna be good or not for me. The hallways were completely silent aside from my own footsteps, and the echoes of distant classrooms full of rowdy students. In the hallways, I mean. Not some sappy shit. Because really, I don't belong here. A lone, skin-bearing human and a... Fuck me, I'm being sappy. I pummel my forehead with the palm of my hand. Man, the fuck up. I tumble backwards and land ass first on the flooring. What dog water luck I have today. Then I get a better view of the other Saurian around the corner. No. No, this is not who I think it is. I offer my hand to the tarot. Dude, you gotta watch yourself, man. The tarot slaps my hand away, getting up himself. You fuckers. You piece of shit, goddamn, jackass, motherfucking- Okay, fuck you then. Fit in better? With people that aren't even the same species as me? What a fucking joke. Dad points outside with his well-toned, slightly scarred arm, Ironstone. A city well known to be one of the nearest to the impact site of the meteor, now bathing in the bright lights of the skyscrapers and busy cars. This game's going to fucking break me. Should have waited until later. <laughs> the video loads back up. It auto plays, and I can see myself hitting the ground hard after being punched squarely in the face. School bully gets his ass handed by victim. I scroll down to the comment section. Maybe someone can question the context of the video. Maybe someone from that moment would know the truth behind it. Please give me something. Whatever. They don't know. They don't know anything. They don't know what happened. They don't care either. Well, fuck them. Fuck them all. This dude's got a lot of trauma. I'm all for it. Holy fuck. 
I'm liking the charm of this game already. Surveying the building, I've secured a more discreet entrance, the side doors, to penetrate the school's strongest defenses. What is this, a fucking castle? Making my way inside, I pull up my own schedule on my phone. First off is... chemistry. Maybe if I pretend I was an alchemist or a wizard making my own potion of plus three destruction, I think I'll at least have some fun with the class. Man, I'm a fucking nerd. Can't let the ops know I fuck with spellcasting. <laughs> nah, man, he's just a big fan of MILFs, you know? As in, like, man, I love fireballs. I take a seat at one of the tables in the back, then... Well, I was. Yeah, what a surprise. I'm just... I'm really tired, so I'm just trying to avoid listening to too many lectures. Shit, did I accidentally call her out? I was referring to the teacher's lectures. Well, I wasn't referring to you. You're not that annoying. I mean, you're tolerable. Noah, you truly are a fucking I mean, you definitely hold yourself to such a high esteem, but... <laughs> I want to protect her! I just want to go up and squeeze her. Uh, yo, uh, orange dude. This your wallet? The Dodger's eyes light up as they lock onto his wallet, then immediately snatches it back from my hand. This fucking guy is gonna make me so happy. Nua. God damn it, let's fucking go! Huh. That went better than I expected. Well, now that that's sorted out, rather effectively might I add, time to treat myself to lunch. Looking down at the first tray I see, my fears were confirmed. It's... it's literally just a whole leg of lamb. On every tray. Raw. I cut my losses and headed to the line moving toward the herbivore section. <laughs> the trays were just tree branches. Oh no. Okay, one more stand. The pescatarian section. For raptor Jesus' sake. Please let them have something that's edible. Maybe they have fish sticks or something. It's an aquarium of live fish. Well, shit. <laughs> <coughs> By this point, it didn't surprise me anymore that my mom still insisted on making things with tomatoes in them, even though I've told her countless times that just feeling them in my mouth makes me almost throw up. Mood? Honestly? Minus the throwing up part. Tomatoes are fucking weird, man. The second I step outside, my ears almost came in at the hellish noise that's coming from the basketball court. The sound of a whistle. There's a decent sized crowd surrounding the ball court. On the court itself, a game is in progress. Most of the seats that were closer to the blacktop are all occupied, but there's still some space nearing the top of the bleachers. As I unwrap my one chance at nutrients for the school day, my eyes start to wander back to the court. The game was seemingly starting to get very heated. It was a pretty diverse team on each side, wearing red and blue shirts respectively. Taking the first bite, despite the still lingering taste of that accursed vegetable, it was still pretty good. You cannot just do animations like that and throw me for a loop. Hold on. My eyes start wandering back up to watch as the ball game goes on. I honestly don't have a clue about sports, but I could tell both teams were effective in their respective positions. As I stood, oh, there she is! There she is! She leaps backward, going for the shot, and then suddenly our eyes meet. For some reason, it feels like the whole world just stopped as I studied her face for the brief moment I had. The way her wide eyes sparked as she stared at me. What about that look felt so different? <laughs> I turned my head back to the girl, still sitting on the ground. sounds, dude, that I make playing these games with dino girls in them. It's like a wave of emotion builds up in my chest and instead of releasing it naturally, I want to throw up. It's so good though, dude. Oh my god. She's just holding her stare at me. That stare. I shouldn't be bothered by it, but for some reason it's off-putting. I began to ponder as I studied her expression more. Then it hit me why this felt off. Everyone I've met looked at me in a negative way. It was always either pity, disgust, or contempt. But this? This was different. 
I've only ever seen this kind of expression in movies. The only word that comes to mind was... Wonder. The full game is going to break me into a billion pieces. I can already tell. This feels strange. I turn back to look and see if that girl is still looking at me. Sure enough. She still is. God. Damn. <laughs> Diego strides in front of me, making extravagant poses as he gestures to the team down below. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> what the hell is he talking about? I'm having to lean side to side to try and get another glance at the team, but I'm blocked by Diego's massive motions. God damn it, move! Damn it, I can't see, dude! Expression changing. Oh man, this guy. <laughs> it's just so extravagant. Oh no. Nothing. Just saw someone. Tell what? That's the <laughs> shit. Can you stop calling me that? Oh my god, this guy. <laughs> oh no. What's all this stuff? Bin Bendo 3 PCs. What the f fuck is that? Can it play Smash, though? The rest of the day went by in a flash. At least for this build of the game. <laughs> Stop. No. It's not funny. No. It's not funny. That's not. No. It's not funny. Stop it. A loud whistle can be heard on the ground floor. A drum assembly begins marching into the gym, pounding on their strapped-on drums and juggling their drumsticks. Soon after, the whole band begins to play. The loud music begins to make me feel uneasy. I can feel the sounds of the brass instruments rock my eardrums. Maddie? I look down at the ball court. Sure enough, the team that I recognized to be the basketball team from yesterday were running onto the court, each one dribbling their own ball. The percussion players roll their drums to the upbeat rhythm of the swift team members, shooting for the hoop at impossible ranges and angles. Some used a trampoline to score a backward shot, some doing backflips. And there I see their last player, the yellow triceratops. She must be the final act. Ten out of ten. Holy fucking shit, she broke the backboard! Damn, Leon's interest perked up. Guess they're either close friends or she's a really popular girl. So that's Maddie, huh? She looks like she's looking for someone in the crowd. Fucking love her, dude. What a weirdo. You son of a bitch. Be nice to this face, you fucking prick. Oh my god, no! The whole room erupts into cheers. I'm sorry, I'm about to have an aneurysm. Way off to the side, I could see Royce talking with Maddie next to the door. The conversation seems pleasant as I watch them while walking outside. Hmm. Well, I did like my seat outside, but... Eh, he's just trying to be a bro. Might as well. Nah, I'll come sit. Why not? You just say preem? Get this cyberpunk slang shit out of here! Now I'm going to say words like choom again and my vocabulary is going to be irreversibly altered. I turn back to the small girl next to me. She's not much of a people person, huh? Well, that's at least something we have in common. Might as well strike up a conversation. Uh, hey, what's up? The fuck did she even just say to me? How did you even know what pea cherry means? Hey, didn't you say you had friends? Like, plural? Where are the others? Huh? 
Where? <laughs> he points his claw towards my six. I turn around, now noticing a hulking figure that towers over me, forcing my eyes to climb the skyscraper of a student. It's her. What? Okay. Cool. <laughs> what a first meeting, man! Holy fuck, this is going to get weird fast. I'm just gonna turn around before this interaction gets even more awkward. I hear a slap behind me. I can see that. <laughs> Holy fuck! Hi. Nua? Holy fuck, thank you, Raptor Jesus. The Triceratops' eyes light up like a dog's as she excitedly squeals out. Fucking adorable. Maddie lets out a light giggle and I join in with a low chuckle. Yeah, likewise. This is going to be wonderful. I'm getting all fucking giddy again! A flood of students start pouring out of the building and into the bus lines, causing students to crowd the space and start pushing into each other. Speaking of... My world darkens as an all-too-familiar mountain starts entering my personal space again. And just when I thought I finally shook her off... Trying to get home? Raptor Jesus, please, just leave me alone. Trying to find that out. No idea where that one is supposed to be, though. <laughs> Her tail starts wagging. No, it's fine. I'll find it myself. No, seriously, it's fine. With that, she steps into one of the vehicles waiting in front of us. Yeah, you too. This is a long demo. Not complaining, I'm fucking having a great time. I'm pulled out yet again from my regular trance by my phone. My heart nearly drops seeing the seemingly thousands of notifications, but taking a closer look, I realize that the email account provided by the school is just dumped with spam. After school clubs, extracurricular activities, you know, the stuff no one other than overachievers usually care about. But then, one of the messages stood out. Madison Hartfold. For fuck's sake. This girl is getting way too friendly. I don't know, I think it's pretty nice. <laughs> Suddenly I'm feeling queasy, anxious. My legs become wobbly like gelatin as I approach the science class. It's like something deep in my gut wants me to turn back and go home. It's somehow even worse than on my first day. I can't help but wonder why. But the moment I stepped through the gaping doorway into the room, the answers to my odd feelings were made clear. Or rather, answer. Singular. Because it was sitting right next to my seat. Maddie. Her eyes widen, her pupils dilate, and her mouth curves into a sickly cute smile that could make Satan blush. I want to pick her up and fucking hold her, but I have a feeling she could probably just do that to me. Reluctantly, I took my seat next to Maddie. Without even looking at her, I could still feel her towering presence. I can even feel her eyes pierce the back of my head as I try to not make eye contact again. But inevitably, I do. Oh my god! Class has ended, and I'm still being accompanied by the Triceratops. She clails- She clails? The fuck is wrong with me? She tails close to me as I head to my second period. As soon as I stepped into the next classroom, Maddie gave her farewell before booking it to the next class, going the same way we just walked from. Is her class even nearby? Hey, I've been meaning to ask. The Triceratops. Maddie. You know anything about her? Is she clingy?
to you? Ever since I saw her, she's been weirdly attached to me. Eyeballing me, constantly asking questions, following me everywhere. Forgot about what? Oh no. What? Alright, the bell rings for the third period. Shortly after gathering my one binder and pencil, I make my way out of the classroom and into the once again busy hallway. Except, somehow, I can pick out a set of loud footsteps making its way towards my direction. No fucking way. <laughs> I met with an out of breath yellow triceratops. She looks like she hauled ass to get here. Dude, what are you doing? Why are you here? So this isn't your next class? So then, again, why are you here? I mean, I could just meet you at lunch. Uh, okay. That's the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Maddie follows closely behind. I can feel her colossal presence even without looking behind me. Hey, shout out worm drama. <laughs> Have you ever even met a human before? For God's sake, I really don't want to deal with her this early in the morning. Then, a devious yet genius idea hatches within the confines of my tiny pea brain. Hey, what's that over there? There, over around that corner. The moment Maddie turns her back towards me, I book it down the hall. You know, it also probably says gullible on the ceiling. Hoping to avoid the stagnant crowd and to get away from Maddie before she finds me and pesters me more, I opt to take the narrow hallway. I think I can cut through there. A familiar sound echoes behind me as I make my way down the hall. The familiar pitter-patter. Not this time, fuckass. I quickly step to the side. I can see the green and gray blur blow right past me and tumble into the trash can with its tail sticking upward. Got you now, you little shit! Quickly, I grab the exposed tail and lifted it out of the trash to get a good look at my oppressor. Wait, you're... uh... Ciro? No. Chiro. Chiro. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get my voice to go that high. I guess I'm the first one here. Sitting down at the table, I instinctively reach for my bag to grab my lunch, only to find nothing. Oh right, Mimi didn't want me to bring my lunch for some odd-ass reason. I get a notification on my phone. It's a text from an unknown number. Fishy, but I decide to risk it and open the message. <laughs> the fucking cyberpunk lingo! Third time! Third time! Fucking time I've been scared like this! A wave of rage washes over me as I turn around to the mountain of a girl that somehow just seems to appear out of nowhere every single time. Uh, hey, so why couldn't I bring my lunch? She places a Tupperware container in front of me. It's translucent, but I still can't see the contents inside. I open the lid. Inside was an assortment of foods, each in their own little divided space. Fruits and berries in one, a tiny bit of grilled steak, and sliced tomatoes. Um... Thank you, Maddie. I nervously stare down at the food before finally picking up the steak. Then I take a small bite. I recognize this texture. I've only experienced it once during the pandemic when food and toilet paper was scarce. What is this fucking sprite? My mom brought home steak at the time. At least what I thought was steak. It wasn't. And oh god, I wish it were literally anything else. I continued chewing, trying to hold in the rancid vegan meat. Oh, gross. That's an interesting flavor. I'll save the rest for later. Well, I'd love to, but I'd need something to get the taste, I mean, wash this down. 
She rushes off towards a vending machine at the other side of the cafeteria. In comes the preppy student from yesterday's prep rally. I want to throw this guy off a fucking roof. He scans the room, seemingly looking for someone in the crowd, then lands eyes towards my direction. Dear God, please no. Can I help you? Oh, all right, no worries. Can I get back to my lunch now? Royce instantly clamps down on my hand, grabs a shoulder and pulls me to his side, posing for the cameras whilst forcing my direction to the flashing lights which made me disoriented. He tugs my hand to bring me closer. He holds up his phone, showing the school fight video. <laughs> You're kidding, right? I got in a fight, so is literally everyone else on this planet. The video's from ages ago, too. Who the fuck cares? Royce reaches over, grabbing the impossible steak and taking a bite. I can see his smug face turn sour. What the fuck? No. Fuck this. You fucking kidding, dude? You're just gonna shit on her cooking? When it's not even your fucking food?! His snout twists up into a smirk. My hands, already balled up into fists, are trembling at this point. Stay the fuck out of this! I don't need your help! And you, you better piss off before I- He smugly gestures towards the large body of students staring in our direction. All around us. Shit. The eyes. The muttering followed. I can't. I nearly trip over the flat surface of the floor as I make a mad dash for the front entrance. I manage to push right through, though I suspect he just allowed me to pass. Oh shit. Make it a few feet down the road. Nearing the edge of the school's property, I met with another force grabbing my arm. Why are you even vouching for that asshole? Oh, this is going to get so complicated. Don't fucking follow me. What the fuck? New plan. Hide inside the bathroom still long enough to pass the entire day. I enter the last one down, locking the door behind me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Fucking trouser snakes rule. Oh man, thanks Todd. I need a paraplegic gator, GF. I miss her too, man. Is this the fucking Black Ops speech? <laughs> Fucking guts in the corner. <laughs> These are pretty funny doodles. My god, there's even more? God damn it! I hear the stall next to me close and lock. I just want to be left alone. I don't know why he has beef with me. Then why don't you say something to her? I hear a frustrated groan followed by a sigh. Well, at least Leon's being genuine, I think. But what he said only confirms that I need to stay away from her. I cannot draw Royce's attention towards me. Shh! 
Shit. I hear the thick Russian accent of the literature teacher as he stumbles his way inside and towards my stall. I fucking knew it! This 300 pound behemoth of a Slavic was so intimidating that I didn't even dare to try and argue. Well, it's a good thing, too, he would have given you finger guns and you would have died. Can't I just have a quiet day for once? Uh, nice to meet you, I guess. I cringe at that phrase. Safe space. As if I'd ever need something like that. I'm not some limp dick pussy. I'm not that fucking helpless. I can take care of myself. Everyone here has always been just offering. God, this again? You know what I fucking mean by that. It's all because of one mistake I made. But shit, I guess this is my punishment, right? I could never be comfortable again. Why can't you just leave me be? Again, she's just staring at me with a calming gaze. She's patient, waiting for me to finish. I sit down on a nearby beanbag. I'm done. Miss Powell gets up from her desk and walks over to sit on another beanbag next to me. Ugh, oh, yes. What else am I supposed to feel? I'm not really their friend. We just met. And to be honest, most of them are either weird or so obnoxiously friendly that it almost seems suspicious. I'm just hoping that they forget about me soon so that I can move on. Because I know that true friendships never last. In the end, someone always hurts the other, and then it all goes to shit. It's always been me who was to blame, so I think it's reasonable to assume this won't be any different, is it? I'm not even sure if they're real friends, I think. This game has been doing a really good job handling this kind of topic. Well, there's Leon. He broke my phone on my first day. Next day when I found him, he gave me a new phone to replace the one he trashed. Tiffany welcomed me to the school along with Diego, but I know for a fact she's only doing it for her image as a student council president. Even though she's making something for me, I don't know what. For Diego, I honestly can't say. He seems like a good guy, but when has my gut feeling ever been right about anything? Then there's Madison. She's such a weird case. She treats me like we've spoken since kindergarten, and honestly kind of creeps me out. She's just way too comfortable with me way too soon, and she doesn't catch any of the hints I give her either. She's trying to get close to me, and I know it's not for the right reasons. What is it? Ugh. That brings me to her. Madison. There's a guy that really doesn't like me. I mean, really does not like me. And she's friends with him. I'm pretty sure the reason why she's trying to get so close to me is so that she can get to where it hurts me the most. Yes? No? I don't know. What in the tar fucking nation does that even mean? Miss Powell closes her eyes and breathes in deeply, using her hands to gesture herself as if bringing the air closer to her. She holds for four seconds, counting with her fingers. She then blows out the air slowly, now gesturing as if pushing the air down. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Breathe in. 
hold, breathe out. I feel calm. Huh. The final bell rings out for dismissal. The session lasted all day, but a part of me feels refreshed. Not sure if it's from the actual counseling or just the fact that I got to skip the rest of the school day. Wait. My incel senses are tingling. <laughs> so rude. Midway down the hall, I could see a yellow triceratops staring right back at me. She looks like she's making a move towards me. Every alarm is ringing in my head like a tornado siren. I feel my blood beginning to boil again. I'm... <laughs> I'm going to be nice. I can't do anything else. I can't do it. Now that I'm thinking straight, an option does come to mind that could just ease me out of this with no hard feelings. I can feel myself freezing up. I'm slowly losing my nerve to work up the words to say. I breathe in once more, and I gather my thoughts so I can say what I need to say. Here goes. Look. I'm sorry for yelling at you yesterday. I know you've been very passionate about hanging out with me, and I appreciate it. But with how clingy you've been, and with how your friend Royce has been treating me, I prefer for you to keep your distance. You've been really cool, but right now I just need my space, dude. I can see her face start to turn sour. Her eyes become glossy. If you think I'm an asshole for saying this, then fine. But I just wanted you to know rather than trying to avoid you and just not talk about it. This is breaking my heart. God damn it. Anyway, later. Not even three steps in, I'm interrupted by the sound of a soft whimpering behind me. It's akin to a small child slowly starting to cry over a dropped ice cream. Madison, I... She was fine a second ago. Now her face is scrunched up, trying to hold back tears. Is this really messing her up that bad? Whoa, 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 I didn't say that. Dear God, she's a mess. Dude, calm down, I don't... Maddie, Damn, what's gotten into you? Why are you so beaten up by this? Truthfully, she wasn't wrong. My plan was to never be seeing anyone, really. But seeing her so beaten up over this, it's tugging on something inside. I can't let this go on. I have to say something to make her feel better. Whoa, 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 I... I never said I never want to see you again. Maddie, even though you've been clinging to me, that was never the problem. I don't mind hanging out with you. But again, with my interaction with Royce, it left a sour taste in my mouth about him. I'm not saying you should stop hanging with him to hang with me. I don't expect that from you. I understand he's your friend, and I respect that. I just do not want to be around him. That's all. I also don't want to feel like I'm the center of attention all the fucking time. Again, I don't mind you hanging with me, but for God's sake, tone it down a bit. I don't need you running across the school for me. That's what lunch is for. She sniffles before using her jacket to dry off her cheeks. Hold up, it's not my place to decide. If you want to be around Royce, that's your choice. Thank you. Yeah, we're friends. I head on to flood into my bus, but Maddie stops me by grabbing my arm. Tiffany reaches into her bag once again to pull out what appears to be a hand-sewn doll. A doll that's fit with a red jacket, camo pants, and topped with a beanie, all complete with button eyes. Oh my god, protect this fucking girl. You made this, and made it look exactly like me. It's nice, but I mean... <laughs> Maddie full 
pulls out her own miniature clone from her bag, holding it up close to my face. I can't, I can't keep a straight face. You guys are fucking weird. <laughs> Guess this is gonna take some getting used to. Yeah. For sure. Bus is leaving. A group selfie? Really? I'm swiftly ignored as everyone quickly moves into formation. Me included, apparently, as Leon shoves me to the middle. The first week has definitely been strange compared to my other schools. Things have been happening so fast that none of it felt real to me. It's still scary having to walk the hallways filled with strangers that aren't even the same species as me. And I won't lie. Having to be a part of a friend group this early on still feels off to me. But at the same time, I get the feeling that I'll be okay here. Oh my god, dude! Woo! It's this... Oh, Jesus. I can't even get the words right. Oh my god. This is gonna be a great game. I can't fucking wait. <laughs> Damn it! I liked it! A lot! That's... fantastic, because I got something to look forward to and be excited about, right? But now, I've got the worst part about this whole experience to deal with. And it's fucking waiting. Okay, so I'll start with the obvious. I thoroughly enjoyed the demo. I thought there was a lot of charm to it. In a lot of ways, it reminded me of some of the better parts of Snoot Game and I Wanna Hug That Gator. You can tell that it was made with a lot of passion. Like you could have made this a short story mod and it would have worked just as well with what you had. So that just means I'm going to have a great time feeling things all over again when the full game releases, as well as hurting myself when I will eventually have to do things poorly. I think the main characters, side characters, and even some of the minor characters all get enough time to properly shine in this demo. The humor is pretty good and on point. If anything, right now, my only criticisms are personal nitpicks. There were some scenes that didn't have any music, but that can always be added in and, uh, Personally, I do like it when silence is used effectively in scenes to really elevate the topic at hand. It can work really well. It's just some of those scenes felt a little weird to me without it. I think that the character writing, for the most part, was very good. I feel like there's plenty of room to improve, but for the most part, it's solid. Finally, I hope that the decisions that you have to make in this game will be a little more, I guess, hidden in terms of whether or not it's the right choice or not. But again, these are just minor nitpicks of mine. I don't want to ever be that guy and be overly analytical about anything, especially a fan-made project. I'm anxious, dude. I haven't felt this way since I played through Wani and Snoot for the first time. That is always a feeling that I want to catch in a bottle and treasure forever. Because these kind of games, this is gonna sound corny. They unlock a part of me that I don't think I've ever really had until recently. Wasn't there another Deno Girl fan game demo that I missed out on? Fuck. There is. Well... Damn it.